Get me a strawberry lava flow pina colada, please, he said, with a trace of a southern drawl and a jaunty smile. It wasn't the kind of drink I'd expect a guy like him would order. After all, he wore black jeans, black lace-up Doc Martens, a black t-shirt with no sleeves, and a black sleeveless biker vest, and some kind of black leather binding on his right wrist. He had black wind-blown hair that was trimmed short and stylish, and his dark brown eyes were warm and friendly. He also wore two black studs in each ear. He set his black motorcycle helmet and a black duffel bag on the bar, focusing on me with his amazing eyes. Could he see what I was thinking? He also had a bit of scruff on his chin. This man was out in the sun a lot. Look at his biceps. Nice ones, too. And triceps and delts. Strong veins lined his lower arms, and his sleeveless t-shirt struggled to contain his pecs. Either this man lifted some serious weights for fun, or he lifted some serious weights to drive the boys wild, like me. This man was crazy beautiful and crazy sexy, the kind of man I dreamed about. He'd been stopping by the bar almost every day for the last week and ordered a strawberry lava flow pina colada every time. He was a tall, cool drink of water in the middle of Death Valley, and I was dying of thirst. No, I'd never expect him to order a pale red drink that was half frozen daiquiri and half pina colada. He seemed more like a miller man to me. What do I know? I've only been a bartender for three years. The familiar longings flowed to my nether regions, and I began to undress him, at least in my mind. Maybe someday I'd do it for real. To stop lusting after his bones and get my hormones back in control, I checked the security monitor hidden under the bar, clicking a button that switched to one of the parking lot cameras. Just like every day, a customized black Ducati Diavel was in the parking lot, and of course, it was all black. His, of course. This man was stylish with money and looks and a motorcycle. The bad boy of my midnight fantasies come to life. The blood pounded so hard in my veins that I'm sure it echoed in the bar. Good thing some light pop played through the speakers. There were two vehicles in the parking lot, the Ducati Diavel motorcycle, which was his, and a white Toyota Corolla. Mine was in the shop getting its brakes worked on, so I had Uber home. I assumed the white Toyota belonged to the gentleman with the dark blue baseball cap sitting at booth number four. That man was not a cool glass of water. In fact, he'd been annoying. As if he knew I was thinking about him, he raised his hand and yelled, Bartender, can't I get any damn service? I want another dirty martini and chill it this time so it's actually cold. Yes, sir, I said, pretending to give him a polite smile and reminding myself that the customer is always right. Coming in a minute. The place is Bits and Giggles, a gay bar in Honolulu, Hawaii. It's a Tuesday, and on Tuesdays we close at 10. It's 10 minutes before 10. The downside is that I'm the only person here tonight, because the other guy who was supposed to be here called in sick. Which normally isn't a problem, because Tuesdays are slow. I made the strawberry lava flow pina colada for the man dressed in black first but I poured it into one of our specialty black stemless tumblers instead of the usual tall clear glass and then spruced it up with a slice of pineapple on the rim. The crushed ice made the tumbler cold. I handed it directly to him, momentarily watching the interplay of his pecs under his tight black t-shirt. His nipples were erect and pushed against the fabric. Forcing myself to look at his beautiful brown eyes, I said, your drink, sir. He gave me a subtle grin, saluted me with the drink, and tried a sip. Not bad, he said. I hope you enjoy, Anthony, 
I said with a little bit of flirt. I had processed his debit card every day for a week, so I knew his name was Anthony Masters. His eyebrows raised and he rewarded me with his confident smile. That's not fair, he said. You know my name, but I don't know yours. Cameron, I said. Just as I had scoped out his merchandise, he did the same to me. I wasn't built like him, but I could hold my own shirtless. I did weights, but I wasn't a bodybuilder, more of a swimmer, really. We live in Hawaii, and looking good at the beach is the official state pastime. I guess Anthony liked what he saw, because his smile turned into a dangerous smile that promised something exciting, and he said, Care to make a second drink for yourself and put it on my tab? I would have loved to do that, but I gave the standard response and said, I'm not allowed to drink when I'm on duty. Besides, I need to start cleaning up the bar if I'm ever going home tonight. Just like my new job, he said, I'm not allowed to drink on duty either. Maybe I can keep you company until you leave. I really am a nice guy. What time do you get off work? Ten, I said, taking a cloth and wiping down the bar and counter. What if I like naughty guys? Care to explain, he said, how naughty is naughty. Depends on how fast you move, I said. I ride a bike, one of the new Diavol V4s, he said, and it moves fast. However, in my defense, I like slow. I prefer to buy flowers and date and go out to fun restaurants and bars and taking long walks on the beach. What if I take you for a midnight ride on the Ducati as soon as you finish cleaning up? My ride is smooth and powerful, and if I go too fast, tell me, and I can slow way down. I promise to treat you right. We don't see a lot of romantics around here, I said, warming to this guy. Just guys who want to party. Dad raised me to treat my dates like royalty, Anthony said. You see before you the last of the romantics. Some of the customers had left a mess on a nearby table, so I took my tray over to it and loaded it with several half-empty glasses. And I said, Then what you're saying, being naughty means killing the romance? I asked. In my experience, Anthony said, when you meet the right guy, you can have both. Bartender, the man in booth number four yelled, the damn service here is terrible. Where is my damn martini? And make sure it's shaken and chilled, or I'm not leaving you a tip. I must be tired because I completely forgot about his dirty martini. I took the almost empties back to the bar and dumped their contents down the drain. I set the glasses aside so I can take them back to the dishwasher in the back, then got out another tumbler, filled it with ice and vodka and olive juice. Dirty martinis might be a classic, but they aren't very imaginative. Anthony, are you a man of the world? I flirted, shaking the shaker with the dirty martini a couple of times. I poured the cool liquid into a clear martini glass, straining out the ice with my fingers. Are you the kind of guy that has a man in every port? Is that your way of asking if I'm in a relationship, he said. I've had my share of one-nighters, but I prefer longer commitments. There is no way to get to know a person in only a matter of hours, and I'd like to get to know the people I'm dating. And no, since I came to Honolulu, I haven't had time. Looking for an apartment is exhausting. First day on the job was yesterday, and it was beyond stressful, and I've gotten seriously lost in spite of my phone. Not to mention that, outside of my job, I don't know anyone. I finished pouring the martini and casually said, Well, now you know me, and I know you. Life must be improving. He saluted me with his drink, and once again, he rewarded me with that incredible smile. God, he knew how to flirt with his eyes, and he must have to register his smile with the police department, because... It's a deadly weapon. The lust settled in parts, 
just below my navel, and I knew I was in trouble. Stopping by table number four, I set the drink down. Here you go, sir, one dirty martini, shaken and chilled. About time, he said, with an annoyed hitch to his voice. You were so slow, don't expect a tip. Something about him seemed off, but now wasn't the time to make an issue, especially with a jerk. I quickly went to the nearby table, wiped it down, and put the chairs up, all while I was thinking about Anthony. I can't remember the last time I saw a guy this jacked, nor can I remember the last time a man instantly turned me on. We have a lot of muscle heads come into the bar, and a lot of bikers. After all, bits and giggles is a gay bar, but no one grabbed my attention, like Anthony did. I bet he knew how to kiss. I bet he knew how to use his tongue. I bet he was a connoisseur of condoms. Was he serious about giving me a ride after work? I will be glad when tonight is done because I can't get him out of my mind. I went to the next booth and wiped it down. There were a million things I should have asked Anthony. What was his new job? Where did he come from? How could he afford a Ducati? What happened to him and his ex? Why did they break up? Why did he move to Hawaii? Was he available after work? He'd offered me a ride on his cycle, so he must be. I bet his lips were strong and his kiss would be incredible. Something about him suggested he liked to take charge. A definite top who was kind to his partner. Either way, he aroused that feeling deep inside me. If he was serious and not just flirting, I would take a ride with him. Imagine wrapping my arms about his muscular waist tightly so I wouldn't fall off. I would definitely say yes to that ride. I walked back to the bar to refresh my cleaning towel. You went quiet, Anthony said, sipping his drink. I didn't want to scare this man away, because I wanted to be with him. I had to play it coy, so I kind of told the truth when I asked, You serious about the ride? Because my car is in the shop. Anthony cocked an eyebrow kind of gave me a nod, and before he could flash his dangerous smile, we were interrupted. The man in the dark blue baseball cap from booth number four ordered, Give me a Commonwealth. He wasn't in booth number four anymore, but right next to the bar. Was this guy serious? It was five minutes until closing. A lot of bartenders I knew would have stopped pouring drinks by now. I should have made an announcement ten minutes ago, but I was too distracted by Anthony and his amazing arms. No regrets, though. First, I'd kiss the back of Anthony's hand, then work my way up his arm, rip his shirt open, and kiss my way to his neck. No doubt about it, I'm a pervert tonight. Anthony chuckled as if he could read my mind. I was staring at him and fantasizing about him in front of him. I'm not 18, so why am I acting like it? Because he's hot. Something wrong with your hearing, the man in the baseball cap declared. I want a commonwealth. Now. Five minutes before closing, and he wanted the most complicated drink known to man? It only had 71 ingredients. I'm sorry, I said. We don't make those here. Very few places actually make it. This place is a lousy excuse for a bar, then, he sneered. Give me a rum Martinez, Japanese style, or is that too complicated for a simple little guy like you? You do know how to make it, right? Sir, we're closing right now, I said, and that drink takes time to make. Don't give me an attitude. You have five minutes, he ordered. Get busy. We make a simplified version, sir, I said, and it is one of our more expensive drinks because it involves infusing the rum with hickory smoke. It will take a few minutes, and since we're closing, it will also close up your tab. Fine, he said. He placed his debit card down, then he sat down at the bar two seats away from Anthony and gave me an odd smile. Make it a double, he ordered, half for you. 
half for me. I'd like to talk to you for a few minutes after you close. The man gave a slight leer. For some reason, he wanted to be in the bar past closing? Something in my gut didn't trust him. I did not want to be alone with him. The sooner I make his drink, the sooner he would be gone. Why was my gut nervous? Was he one of those guys that got off on ordering others around? A serious control freak with a capital P-H? I did not want to be alone with him. Besides, the longer he waited around, the less likely Anthony would wait around. I had an idea. Maybe I didn't have to be alone with baseball cap man. I went to the monitors behind the bar and quickly locked the cameras on the bar. Then I made a second strawberry lava flow pina colada, poured it into another black tumbler. As soon as I added a slice of pineapple for the garnish, I set it next to the other one in front of Anthony. The first one wasn't even a quarter gone. One of Anthony's eyebrows twitched. I know telepathy isn't real, but I looked into Anthony's beautiful eyes as hard as I could and tried to convey my discomfort. Put it on my tab, he said, checking the clock on the wall and flashing that deadly smile again. We'll share the drink at ten when you're off duty. Oh no, he'd gotten the wrong message, but at least he'd wait. I then got out the large empty whiskey bottle, the smoke gun, and the wood shavings. First, I chilled the rum in a glass filled with ice as I plugged in the smoke gun. When the smoke gun was up to temperature, I took a pinch of the hickory wood shavings, dropped them into the gun, and a second later, sweet-scented smoke came out of the gun. It took a minute to fill the whiskey bottle with the cloudy smoke, and once it was filled, I poured the chilled rum inside and swirled the liquid and smoke together. It made a chilled, smoky rum that is usually delightful, especially when I pour a little smoke onto the top of the glass to add its aroma to the rum. Tonight, I didn't take pleasure in it. I set the rum martinez before the man, picked up his card and said, Enjoy. Right after I ran his card, the card reader beeped and displayed an upsetting message. Payment declined. Damn, this was the last thing I needed. I felt stupid and I mentally kicked myself. Why hadn't I ran his card earlier, before I made the rum martinez? Baseball cap guy had a tab of close to 50 bucks. This sucked. I'm sorry, sir, I said. You'll need another form of payment. He drained the rum martinez in a single gulp and said, Let's arrange an alternate form of payment. Unbelievable. Why didn't I see this coming? This man had planned this. The creep. I gave him the fake polite smile and said, An alternate form of payment is out. Health inspectors won't allow patrons into the kitchens, and you are not trained to run our dishwashers. Besides, it's closing time. We accept cash or credit card only, I said. I was thinking of something more personal, he said. I bet you were, I thought. This can't be happening. What did this guy think this was? A cheap porno? What do I do? I'm the only one here tonight. It's a Tuesday, a slow night. Cameron, Anthony said, sipping his drink and quietly winking at me. What seems to be the problem? This man's card was declined, I said. This doesn't concern you, the guy said to Anthony, so butt out of our conversation. Let me get this right, Anthony said, his words slow and precise. His smile was completely gone. You've been sitting here in the bar as long as I've been here and can't pay your tab? I folded my arms, a little unsure of what to say. That sounds like you're trying to take advantage of the bar, Anthony said. This is between us, baseball cap men said, gesturing to me and him. 
Anthony didn't make me wait when he said, Well, you're right. It doesn't concern me. Cameron, let me get you my card. My heart suddenly stopped, and not in the good way. Was Anthony going to leave me here? Had this creep just scared Anthony off? I tried to keep my voice from trembling when I asked, You just had the single strawberry lava flow pina colada, right? Two, actually, Anthony said. We still have our date tonight, remember? I'm giving you a ride. Cameron, tonight I am celebrating my new job as the newest member of the Honolulu Police Department with my oldest friend in Honolulu. That's you. Know a good place that's open this time of night? Pulling his duffel close, he unzipped it, feeling around inside. He pulled out a small bundle, which accidentally revealed the clothes inside. The policeman's uniform neatly folded. The bundle he pulled out included his wallet, which he set down, along with a couple of folded papers, and his police badge. Opening his wallet, he removed his debit card and handed it to me. You're a policeman, baseball cap guy said. You don't dress like a policeman. We can dress however we like, Anthony said, when we're off duty. I'd recommend you pay your tab before this turns into a dine and dash, code 537. You do realize that's a felony. Potentially punishable with a fine and jail time, right? Wow. I barely even knew Anthony. Didn't even know he was a cop, but he had my back. He stood up for me. Loyal, brave, and he had a spine. Is it too soon to fall in love? My last boyfriend never did that much for me. Something told me that Anthony was a keeper. I looked at the baseball cap guy and waited for his response. I don't want to cause any problems, the man said. My apologies. Wouldn't you know? Baseball cap guy reached into his pocket and paid his full bill with cash. This had all been some kind of a kink for him. To each their own but leave me out of this one. After the man left, Anthony slid the second drink over to me and said, It's ten. That means we're both off duty. Let's have a drink, go for a ride, and get something to eat. I'm buying. Just a moment, I said, walked to the door, and locked it. As my heart pounded, I couldn't believe I was asking something so dangerous. But I asked anyway, did you find a place yet? I'm still at a motel, he said. Prices in Hawaii are more expensive than I realized. After we finished our drinks, we walked out to the Ducati. Anthony gave me a ride, and he was right. The Ducati Diavel was smooth, fast, and a dream to hold. So was Anthony. I told him dinner was at my place. I'd make him something special, and he could share my apartment for the next month while he figured life out. And he said, 50-50 on everything. And once again, his dangerous smile was back. On everything, I said, flirting a little. I only have one bed, so do you want the right side or the left or the old lumpy couch? He gave me his jaunty grin and said, I think I'm going to like Honolulu. Our first kiss soon followed, but it wasn't our last. That night, I got my wish. Let's simply say that he kissed better than I thought, and I got to undress. Let's leave that thought for later. We were so good together that we're still roommates a year later. Long-term roommates with benefits. Very long-term roommates the kind with the ring, and a honeymoon at Bondi Beach. The End I'm Gio, and thank you for staying with me until the end. I appreciate all of you for listening and taking a chance with my little channel. I'm sending you all a little bit of love. See you next Wednesday. Peace. (sighs) 